Hello and welcome to the PNQ Live Update for Wednesday, April 15th. I'm Brian Hernandez and I am here with Lenny Rago, U.S. Pizza Team member, uh, part of the U.S. Pizza Team Council and uh, owner of one of the three Panino's Pizza locations in the Chicagoland area. Lenny, why don't you, uh, when you talk forward, uh, lean forward when you talk because we're having a little issue with your mic, but why don't you say hi to the world for us real quick. Thanks, Brian. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, Lenny Rago with Panino's Pizzeria, uh, co-owners with uh, Gino and Bruno. Uh, also members of the U.S. Pizza Team, and uh, thanks for having me, Brian. Absolutely, um, I wanted to talk with you today because this is I, um, it's a terrible trend that I've been seeing. Actually, mostly uh, you guys over there in uh, Chicago right now. You are becoming one of the bigger hotspots, and uh, I know it's our good friend Derek Tung. He made a decision to close a few weeks ago as well, and now and you decided to do the same thing. Why don't you uh, give us the reasoning behind why you decided uh, it was better to close down for a little while? Well, when they first, when they first put the uh, stay at home order here in uh, Illinois, um, a couple of my guys were eating out in the tiny room and uh, they were kind of concerned. So, uh, you know, they, they said we'd better just wait this out and, you know, and, and, and be home with our families and uh, kind of, uh, you know, struck me a little bit. So I had, you know, we went through, it was a Friday night. And I think we calmed down everybody as we went through the night. And then we had a meeting at the end of the night. And I said, what do you guys want to do? And uh, they kind of uh, hinted that, you know, you know, we'll work, you know, the shorted, you know, shortening the hours a little bit and stuff like that. But um, it just, it just hit me. And then, you know, as I went home, you know, had a conversation with my wife and my son and, you know, my daughter has special needs and she works at a grocery store. So it was concerning to me as well that, um, you know, she was working and we were all working here and, you know, I'm just, you know, it kind of hit me hard when uh, my son said to me, you know, I feel more comfortable staying home and if you need money i have money saved up to help with anything which i thought was you know kind of brought a tear to my eye but yeah you know didn't have to come to that uh to that uh, that's well I, I can imagine that's it's very touching i mean you've been there for them the whole time and uh yeah. you know to have it kind of reciprocated in that way is great so, so carmelo he jumped in so we're saying hi i did want to let everybody know just ask the questions here live in the comment section for lenny to ask um, he's been dealing with a lot so i want to let him take it take it away again yeah so you know when my son said that it kind of hit me hard my wife said you know i think we should all stay home i mean it's uh this is a pretty deadly virus and one of the things that really struck me was you know we are trained in sanitation for you know our normal thing that we go through but we've never been trained for COVID 19. we don't know how this virus is how to kill it how to work with it and uh, that, that was another factor. Um, you know, two of our locations remain open. The the uh, it's a smaller. I have a, one of the bigger locations here, so we have a lot of people coming in and out. And uh, I have a couple of healthcare workers that work part time as drivers. And uh, you know, they're they're in the the front lines. You know, one guy delivers stuff to the nursing homes at nighttime, and the other guy works dialysis. And I just felt like the other guy's taking public transportation. I just felt like, you know what? We're all healthy. Let's go home. We'll ride this out. I've been established for 25 years here in, in a Evanston location, and I think my business will will be back when we come back. And I, I think everybody's been understanding. The community has been great. When I when I posted, they all reached out. They all come back. It's been it's, it's been heartwarming. And um, you know, I, I've been staying in contact with you know friends in the pizza industry. You know. Um, you know, I talked to Tony Triano today of JB Alberto's and uh, tonight is, is his last night. And, you know, the uh, the peak is this week and next week here in Chicago. And uh, he feels like he has to do it, too. Now, you know, to get by that, you know, do his part in the curve. And you know, everybody knows Tony's place is, well, you know, a high volume restaurant. That's one of the yeah. most fine tuned pickup deliveries I've ever seen in my life. Probably <laughs> ever. So. You know, right. and we would, we've had conversations when I first started and, you know, we both felt the same way. And, you know, he was, you know, we were trying to help out our employees to stay as long as I can. I think, you know, at, at the time, you know, my situation was a little bit different than his. And, and uh, I think today, you know, when I talk to him, 
making the right decision. And, and uh, you know, I uh, talk to Mike Nelson too of uh, Little Pops Pizza on a daily basis. And me, Mike and I come up with ideas and he, he introduced me to this company that, you know, sprays for the COVID. And, you know, we had him come in and him and I talk on a, on a daily basis about just different things. And, you know, even reaching out to my pizza, you know, friends and, you know, guys from all over, you know, when I first, you know, was talking about this, they reached out to me. You know. So, yeah, it was a tough decision. I stand by my decision. I'm the leader of this organization here at Panitos in Evanston. And I felt like if I didn't be that leader, then everybody else was, you know, you know, you know, feel like they don't, they, they didn't want to do the right thing. And, and go you know, and tell me they didn't want to work. They said they'll work, but they just felt uncomfortable. So it was kind of both on ends, and I'd rather just be safe. And I've talked to them. Nobody's sick, so nobody caught it on our end, which is good. We're all healthy. Uh, I have applied for the PPP, uh, actually working with Chase, and uh, it's been great because uh, actually the banker last night on one of my accounts you know, was emailing me at midnight at two in the morning. So they're really pushing to help us uh, businesses out. And uh, the PPP process was uh, very simple. You know, it was a little bit confusing at first, but once you got it down, it, 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 it hasn't been a bad process. I know I've got funded on one of the accounts, but I'm waiting on the other three. And uh, if I have any advice is just be patient. You're going to get your turn. All banks are different. Everybody, they're lending you money. And you know, we've been around 25 years, so we have a little bit of track record. They see our, you know, our progress. So they're going to lend to the oldest first. And with, with some kind of, I don't think everybody's going to get PPP. I mean, if you don't have a proven track record, I don't know how they can lend you money. I mean, the bank's going to feel unsafe. So, you know, hopefully you've been around and you've done it and you've got good, uh, uh, good I mean, it's not even my regular banker. My regular banker's here in Chicago. This is a lady out of Las Vegas that runs a Chase branch out there. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, if any advice, just be patient. It'll come. Uh, and uh, that's going to get me through this, you know. My employees are, are going to get paid, you know. Uh, they might not get paid full, you know, for the weeks they miss, but I'll make sure they get paid something so they can live on and then uh, use it for the when we open back up, we're opening up on the April 28th. I've made a decision that we're going to open up on 28th if the staff feels comfortable, which I think is two weeks away, so we should be good. Um, <clears throat> get everything organized and have them come in here, and we're going to do a deep cleaning of our head at sprayed. I mean, so, I mean, we're going to take the same precautions as we did before and uh, do a no-contact pickup delivery. Our dining room is probably not going to open up back anytime soon, I don't think. I just don't feel like, you know, the social distancing thing is going to work in the dining area yet. So. Well, I mean, yeah, we're, we're we got to try to go back to as normal as possible. But, um, I mean, I did want to say you did mention Mike Nelson of, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Mike Nelson of Little Pops. And uh, I, I do think I'm going to be trying to set up something to talk with him actually coming up soon. So I'm going to make sure to talk about this spray. But um, and they didn't mute your mic, so we're not getting the feedback. So don't worry. I'll, I'll unmute you in a second. <laughs> but um, also, you know, I did have a couple of questions uh, about, you know, the, the fact that the other two locations stayed open. But first, I wanted to say, ask how important you think it is to listen to the staff. But I mean, if if you lost a couple people who didn't feel safe there and, uh, you know, is it worth it to do that and then try to replace them or work with whoever does feel safe, you know, still safe to stay there and work? Or is it should you just pull the trigger, you know, right away? And as soon as you get a couple of people wanting to go home, make this hard decision. Well, you know, I had you know one person that works you know full time here, and she lives with her grandmother and grandfather, and she didn't want to bring it home to him, so she made the decision before I even shut the doors to not come in. Um, I know my wife feels very strongly about staying home and, and letting this thing pass, you know, and they're they mostly work the day shifts, so um, a lot of them, you know, they have three kids, they're young kids, they're families, you know, and when they and they reach out to me and say, hey, this thing's getting worse. And, you know, every day we have a conversation. I got masks for everybody. I got gloves. I mean, it's it's going to be the new norm for a little bit. But if we don't do our part here, I don't think the curve's ever going to go go away, you know. And at least we can learn 
for we've been closed two weeks and in the next two weeks we're going to learn a lot more about this COVID-19 and and how to work with it and that and that's the key is learning how to work with it in a safely manner to where all our employees feel safe and comfortable coming in to work every day and like you said um it's i wanted to also ask you about uh getting relief after you've closed are there options for people who've had to close their doors to still get relief or you can you get only get the ppp if you've stayed open i know we've been talking with mike rasmussen and you've been in there asking a lot of questions which is great you know you've been figuring out all the hurdles and and things that we have to jump through so i mean what, what is your take on that so far so you don't have to remain open to collect ppp it's designed to um you know like it's designed to rehire and replenish your force to where it was the day you closed so, for instance, if you have 10 employees and eight come back, you might get, you know, this amount of money in the bank. And then you're going to have to use that amount of money to pay the eight employees. And you might not you might have to return the money for the two or you pay your utilities and your, your rent with the rest. So 75 percent of it goes towards your your payroll. And then the other 25 percent can go towards your rent and utilities. <clears throat> as far as what I know about it, which is pretty much the norm. <clears throat> um yeah, so you can go back and pay your employees and, you know, just got to be a little bit uh, creative on what you do. So let's say you have a dining room and uh, your employees, you know, your dining room don't open up, you're doing pickup delivery. You might want to bring that person back as a social media person and help you out with the social media aspect of it. And, you know, try to grow your business that way because they are giving you the funds to pay for that employee. So you might as well take advantage of it and, and, and hire them on in some way or capacity to to help in the business and you know as you're rebuilding to open back up or if you're still in business to to have that person come in and, and do that type of work for you because that is time consuming and you know most of and then i assume it's probably very important uh, even if you're closed to maintain that social media presence just don't disappear for the whole time you're closed you want to stay top of mind right i want to stay on top of it um, you know i've been messing with the google end of it you know make sure i but temporarily closed and I had a message put on my machine. I have a message on hold system that just says, due to COVID, blah, 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 we're opening. So now I'm going to change it this week and let them know, and, hey, we're going to open up on this date. This is what we're doing, you know, to uh, to help out with the uh, COVID-19 preparations and sanitation purposes of it. And uh, <clears throat> I've been, I look strongly into learning how to do that stuff myself. You know, I watched the guy do it here and spray it and stuff like that. And it's not that hard. It's just you can't find the equipment to do it right now. So that was that's kind of challenging. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, so I I, I kind of listened to my employees, and you know, a lot of the customers were coming up to the door, and uh, you know, not keeping your social distance. It kind of freaked out some of the employees. You know, saying, "Hey, listen, you know, we have a system here." And, you know, and they've been really good. Our customers have been really loyal and given good tips, and we were able to give some of the tips to our employees and help them out while there are shortages and stuff like that. What I was hearing it sound like is, you know, an importance on choosing your wording correctly. Make sure you put in temporarily that they know you're not gone anywhere. And then as soon as you can, switch it back over to from we're temporarily closed to we'll be reopening. It's all about the, the message that you're putting out there, trying to stay positive on social media, which is a big thing, especially if you have, have had to close and you want to keep everybody engaged. So I did want to pop up a question here, Tim. I, I'm sorry, man, that you were on the yesterday or the other day. And Tim Rash, Rash, I, I know I'm butchering your name. I apologize. But um, he wants to know, do you have an action plan for possible limited resources in the future, such as cheese, pork, flour, you know, any kind of uh, limitations, for I guess, for vendors? So, um Smithfield is one of my sponsors and, uh, you know, I talk to them on a regular basis, but you know, what happened in, I guess they're in their Smithfield plant is only going to be a two week kind of a backup. It's not going to really affect much. Uh, I, I can't see there being a, a cheese shortage or flour shortage because, you know, the, the flour situation might be a little bit different if you're using an imported flour. So I don't know how the importing is going on right now. Uh, coming overseas, but I don't think they shut anything down. The cheese, I mean, I talk to Mr. Dinner or Galbani all the time. We're close friends and uh, one of our sponsors and I'm brand ambassador for this. I talk to them all the time and he says they're, you know, their manufacturing is going on as normal. So, I, you know, with all the, with all the uh, main restaurants with 
limited pickup delivery, there's still plenty out there that they're not selling. So I, I don't see that being a shortage right now. You know, the grocery stores, of, when we first opened, we had a little bit of a shortage. You know, the pastas were gone. And they were buying all the pastas because people were hoarding everything and, and bringing it home. And now you go to the store and it's, you know, it's all filled back up. So, I mean, the supply chain is still there. So I don't, I don't see that going to be a problem. You might, you might get some prices increase and stuff like that because, you know, they're not selling as much product and product. And, but I, I, I really don't think it's going to be a problem. Ah, there's Mr. Binner. Mr. Binner helped me make the beef on whack pizza. <laughs> but, great pizza, the beef on whack. It's still, Tommy says it's still his favorite one we've ever done. Guy. I'm not a horseradish guy, so I didn't really know, like, how to make, the, you know, the horseradish taste you know, kind of like the beef on Weck, and he's from the town, so he was I'm like, taste this. Kept, you know, he kept sampling it for me to make sure I had the right consistency and, and, and taste level. Well, and what you did with it, just putting it into the uh, the, the Gabani, uh, it wasn't even mascarpone, was it ricotta? You just yeah. kind of mix it in there, so it wasn't smack you in the face horseradish. It was yeah. subtle, but with enough flavor, it was good, good, good. Yeah. The caraway seeds. I had two Lars is next to me over there with uh, his arm showing there, but. Uh, Michael Stevens made a good suggestion, so I was able to uh, actually put in some honey in there uh, to in the horseradish to give it a little bit of a, just to balance out the horseradish and sweetness. So that pizza was uh, really good. I was really impressed on how it came out, and I am the Weckoff champion, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the Galbani Weckoff. Yeah. Um, no, that was definitely a great, a great trip. That's something that Galbani does for the U.S. Pizza team. They're our platinum sponsor, and they 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 are very involved in what we do and um, just hands on. And they're always got somebody at one of our events. And they brought some of the ambassadors out to up to Buffalo to uh, pretty much just play in the kitchen. I mean, it was it was insane. There was no competition, nothing like that. It was just hey, come in and try out some of our. You know some of our stuff here, and uh, it, it's just one of those things where we're very lucky to have a sponsor like them. Um, they actually, you know, they, they work with Donatella too, who I interviewed, I guess, on uh, it was on Monday. So, I mean, they got they brought all this, and then there's, I mean, I can't even remember how many just look, and this is just everything else that we got to play with. Uh, yeah, I remember that. That was great. Yeah, that was such a good day. So, fun, all right, I did want to. One, we'll talk a little more about some Galbani stuff a little bit later too, because they are again a really good supporter of uh, our magazine and the team. But um, and as well as individuals such as yourself, you know the actual independents and, and people they work with. But uh, I did want to ask you, um, what was, did you talk with Lenny or I'm sorry with Gino Rago and Bruno Bernetti about the possibility of them closing down? Was there as much concern at the other two locations, whether well, um, Wrigleyville or Lakeside and uh, Park Ridge? Was there as much concern as you had in Evanston? Their employees were, you know, not as their employees were different than ours. So they didn't, you know, they felt like they, you know, they wanted to continue to work, and uh, they didn't feel as much of a threat as uh, as uh, we did here in Evanston and my employees in Evanston. I just, you, know, you have to listen to your employees, and they, you know, trust. They, but we all had a meeting, and you know, they all, they all were in agreement with me. Lenny, you got to do what you feel, and I, you know, that was. The decision I made, I felt like that was the right decision at the time, and I stand by it. Every day, I, I, I feel like I made the right decision, so I, I'm not, not I'm never turned back on that. Uh, they had a long conversation with their employees, and they said, we'll do what you want us to do. So if you want to stay home, we'll stay home. If you want to keep open, we'll, we'll keep open. And thank God nobody is, um, you know, those that location in, in Park Ridge is a little bit, you know, uh, it's different. You know, we're highly populated here in, uh, in in Evanston here you know a lot of uh, you know commuters you know back and forth the train being close by and stuff like that so it's a little bit different situation so I mean we did have that conversation and uh, it's going well there and I have that location sprayed and uh, on a weekly basis now so well, uh, I want to I want to talk with Mike but I mean just I hadn't heard anything about uh, a COVID spray yet. Um, I mean, what, I, definitely, I assume it's definitely um, been engineered to target this, or is this something that's just been on the on market forever? They're just repurposing it for it? No, there's a spray that the FDA approved spray that they're using in planes, in the hosp mostly hospitals and nursing homes where they, they spray for this, you know, 
it's a chemical, but it's totally FDA approved and it's food safety and stuff like that. They come in, they spray everything down and it, you know, it's electromagnetic. So it heats up and then it, it creates, uh, it heats up the, the chemical where it just dissipates into a, like a fog and then it just kind of goes into your restaurant and it goes on top of your boxes, your handles. I do all the delivery bags and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's just another added protection for my employees and uh, and the customers to uh, to know that we're doing our part here on uh, making sure that we don't spread the virus or we're killing it. But, you know, like every Monday we come in, and seven to ten days of you know it leaves uh, some sort of barrier on the, uh, the surface. Again, once someone touches the surface, it's contaminated again, and that's where we don't have that knowledge to say, hey. We've never been trained on COVID-19. Why are we in this? Why are we still doing this? What the hell? We don't know anything about it. It's killing people. And I don't want to be that statistic and nor do my employees. So. And then, um, I mean, this so is this something that you think is readily available to any independents or, or restaurant owners, or is this something you had to fight to find or you lucked out somebody told you about? Yeah. It's something is this something about- that other people can ask about in, in their markets? So I have a friend of mine that owns um, that, uh, that, that heads one of the biggest cleaning companies, uh, uh, Harvard Maintenance. And, uh, and I talked to him. He's one of my best friends. And uh, he's like, he was explaining to me how to do it. And I actually ordered the gun from him. So he's got 70 on order. So once that comes in, uh, it's going to be an eight-week log, but, you know, I'll get it. So in the meantime, I'll use this company. And uh, when I get it myself, I'll get the chemical, put it in there, and just spray it myself. And... Uh, it's uh, it's very hard. There's every you know everybody went online and bought it all up, and uh, chemicals and you know back ordered stuff like that. Just gotta. All right. Well, it sounds like there's there's uh things coming out there that uh, are either hitting the market. You know, we're trying to make some progress on this. Hopefully, and I did meet your mic too. I guess my uh my audio is breaking up a little bit so i'm playing uh mic tag here but uh i did want to talk to you a little bit about um you know some of the hurdles to get relief aid as i said you would close down and you were asking a lot of the questions of mike rasmussen of high tech cpa about you know what you can do what are some of the biggest problems that you've had in trying to get some of this relief so that you can let other people warn them to expect or you know work around um so I had a lot of questions, you know, prior to applying. And I think that day, I'm not sure if, yeah, I already had applied. But um, Chase made it real simple. Everybody was knocking Chase at first, you know, eh, they don't want to play ball and they're going to, but they did their homework. They got their site up and working. They created their own little form and application. And, and on a Sunday night at 6 o'clock, I was about to sit down and eat dinner with my family, and the phone rings, and I'm like, oh, God, great. So I say, hey, can I call you back in 10 minutes, scarf down my food? And uh, three hours later, we got all three companies done. But they made it simple, and uh, they didn't ask for too much. And you know, I got off the phone with Mike that day, and he, he called me up, him and my accountant. We had a three-way conversation, and um, – you know, Mike gave me some good pointers and we helped him out. We, you know, I helped him. I showed him some of the documents that we were doing. And, you know, I still like to talk to Mike. I still have some questions uh, about it. But my concerns were like, okay, I closed on April 1st. I'm going to get my PPE on May 1st. Can I go back and pay the back pay for the employees? That's one of the questions. And Mike said yes. And then another one was, uh, uh, my big, my big concern was like, how's this going to work and how are you going to keep good records of this? So yesterday I am, um, so I keep myself busy at home and I'm all doing something. I'm working on my new website. I'm working on my new online ordering and then I'm working on all the, you know, at Panino's I do a, a lot of the administration stuff. So I, the number guy, so I, I take care of all the paperwork. So, you know, Bruno and Gino are doing their thing and I'm doing my thing. Everybody knows we all have our strengths and weaknesses in the business, and that's one of my strengths. So I've been dealing with ADP, and ADP has been great. So when you call up ADP, you tell them, hey, can you set up my account to where I can report the payroll and show it report up as PPP? This way, when, when one of the things is you have to show proof that you're using it for payroll. So we created uh, a report 
And then when I enter my payroll, it says, you know, hourly on there normally. Now it says PPP hourly. So I'm going to plug in my hours, PPP hourly. And then when I do my report summary at the end, it's going to print as PPP payroll. And then I can prove those documents to the uh, government and say it's going to be uh, forgiven because we're using it for this about a time period. So ADP has been great. Check with your payroll company. I'm sure paychecks and all those other ones have the same thing. Yeah, and that's great because you were you were very active in the calls with uh, Mike Rasmussen, and we're having another webinar tomorrow with Mike Rasmussen. The link will be up here later today, uh, but we're doing it weekly with him just to kind of just we're doing it weekly with Mike Rasmussen just to get everything caught up. It takes him a week, and like Lenny said, uh, you know some of the questions that Lenny had helps Mike figure out the answers for other people. So, um, I mean, that's it's great that you're you're kind of cutting the path through the jungle there to help people, you know, get into this. Now, as far as you've already got a plan for opening up, you've got a date. I said, I think it was said April 28th and I'm going to unmute you here in a second, but uh, what are the other plans for uh, reopening after this situation? Let me just go back and touch one thing on the PPP that I learned. So after the fact, um, you know, talking with Mike, one of the points we made was, you know, on the thing, it says, how many people do you employ? So the question was, how many people do you employ and how many people are you going to retain? So I employed 18 people here at the Evanston location, which nine of them are part-timers. So I did not know that. It had to be full-time employees. So what I should have reported was 12 people, I have you know, 13 people, 10 full-time and three, because they're going to go back and say, you only retained 10 people out of the 18 people. So if you're filling out the forms now, make sure you can, you know, you adjust that. I've called my bank and I've put it in an email form, like Mike said, uh, to do that. I expressed my concern that it wasn't uh, filled out properly and it wasn't really specified on the sheet. But, you know, Michael Lamarca works with the gov uh, with the uh, Ohio Restaurant Association. So he introduced me to his guy. We had a three-way conversation about it. And we think it's dollar for dollar. So I don't think it matters as far as like how many employees that you, you're going to retain, I think it's dollar for dollar. So I can hire more employees and maintain that same dollar amount. So I, I, that's one of the things I want to touch on as far as opening back on opening back up and, and what to do. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to expect really, honestly. I, I know once I put it out there, we're going to get our regulars that are going to come back. Um, my, my concern is, is the other businesses that, you know, that are going to start to open up, you're going to see a lot of people flooding to, you know, nail salons, hair salons. You'll be the first in line, I think, Brian. But um, um, <laughs> yes, sir, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I had to throw it in here. Sorry, boss. But um, it's like what's going to happen. The schools are all closed. You know, a lot of these um, mothers rely on daycare and, and different stuff like that. I mean, What's going to happen there? You know, uh, are these, you know, the essentials are going to go, you know, still going to be there. I mean, social distancing and people are going to be afraid to, to go into a restaurant and eat, go to a concert, go to a, a sporting event. I don't think that's going to happen for quite a while. I think we're in this for a little bit and uh, they need to come up with something to, uh, to get this under control because I, this is going to be a long time coming and, I feel bad for the restaurants that don't have pickup delivery to begin with that are just doing it now, you know, to get by. But that's going to be a I, I don't feel confident that those places are going to be able to survive if we continue this social distancing. And I feel bad for them. My heart goes out to them and then the health care workers and the, the doctors and everybody essential workers you know we're still going out i'm still going out you know to my stores you know and it's it's tough it's a tough situation because you don't know this virus is so contagious it's so contagious and it's got to be airborne for everybody to be catching it as fast as we are so yeah well i mean and i'm gonna mute you guys real quick john arena just jumped in also albert takasaki uh one of our good friends from out in san diego um John Arena says, hello, Lenny Rago. 
And Carmelo, I do see your question. I'll get to that here real quick. But, uh, you know, as far as you think that there's a lot of practices that people are instituting now that they're going to hang on to after the fact. Like you, and this also, I think, kind of goes towards Carmelo's question. Hold, hold on one second. You know, what do you think about them opening up restaurants at the end of the month and having servers wearing masks and gloves? Is that going to kill the industry on waiting on tables? And just having that visual is kind of uh, scary in itself. And I've been seeing things where they, they estimate maybe up to 2022 before we can loosen some of these social distancing I mean, what do you think is going to happen in that in that respect? Well, I think um, you're going to see that if you're going to have to open, you know, the servers. It depends if your servers are going to come back, if they're going to feel comfortable coming back. Is anybody going to want to do that? You know, that's what you got to ask yourself. You're going to have to go to a, probably a paper menu. You're just going to have to just throw them out after every one, you know, try, you know, instead of giving them the regular menus and, and you know, throw them away. Um, masks and gloves, again, the server, as long as they're washing their hands. Hi, Lenny. I mean, uh, John Arena. Happy birthday, buddy. You know, it's a little inside joke. And Albert, hello. Um, yeah, it's going to be a challenge. I, I I don't know what to expect. I mean, we, we do a heavy sit down here, a heavy traffic lunch business here. You know, we rely on schools and factories around here, so they're all shut down. And I'm I'm here all day right now, and that that phone hasn't rang once during the day. You know, but the people usually come up to the door like crazy. It's not non stopping here. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think you're going to see you know, the server is going to have to wear gloves and masks. You see, customers are going to come in with it, you know, and then, you know, we do self serve. You come up, you know, you got forks and knives inside the thing and napkins. We're not going to be able to put any of that stuff out there anymore. Uh, you have to put shields up and stuff like that. But, you know, we got to do our part, and I think uh, we got to have to have more guidelines. We need to know more about this COVID nineteen. We don't know enough about it, and that's that's the problem that's concerning. We don't know how to how to work with it. Uh, it's definitely a game changer, you know, overall. So, um, are there? I had a brilliant question and I lost it. So uh, what's the kind of the biggest tip in, in your situation, having to made the conscious decision to close out, close down and dealing with trying to get relief. What's one more big tip that you could give um, to everybody out there. And obviously everybody jump in and ask your questions here uh, of Lenny and anything he's gone through. He's very accessible. So um, just, you know, what's the, one of the biggest things that you want to convey right now? Just communicate with your vendors and all your stuff, you know, don't, I mean, they're in this with us just as much as, as, as everybody else, you know, and they've provided you with, you know, all your food and stuff like that. And don't ignore them, you know, work with them. You know, I know I work with Greco out here and, you know, Tommy called me today and he wanted to know, you know if I have any money because I had to sit on my doors my first time back here. So I'm going to give them, you know, mail out the check to him. But, um, you know, we, we got to do our part to help everything out and, you know, just communicate. Like I, my landlord called me today and um, they're going to do a three month extension at the end of my lease and extend my lease and let me pay pay the rent portion of it. Not the cam and taxes, obviously, but the rent portion. So just communicate with all your vendors and all your suppliers and and uh, your everybody that you're doing a, a you know business business with on a, on a weekly or monthly basis. I mean, that's my biggest thing is, you know, and, and just keep in contact with everybody, keeping your employees. Like I call them once a week or text them, how you doing? You know, I just wanted to make sure none of us, we were quarantined. That's our 15th day. So we should be all good if everybody stayed home, which is hard to do, but, um, you know, we're going to have them come in and, uh, I'm pretty confident that we're going to land the PPP here. So I'm going to bring them in starting maybe this week or next week, a couple of days here and there and do a deep cleaning, get ready and, uh, just go over some of the things that we're going to have to do and, and procedures and i think you know the no contact is going to be around for quite a while so we have to learn how to how to, how to work with it on a, on a weekly and daily basis now so and then and the social distancing you know it's going to be interesting i mean this is the hardest thing i decision i ever had to make in my 25 years of my first pers- doing it myself you know uh and it was a very hard i didn't sleep that night when i made that decision because I, I think I was one of the first ones to do it. People think I'm, you know, well, why are you closing? You could do pickup delivery. You're essential. I'm like, it's, it's not about being essential. It's about feeling safe and my employees feeling comfortable to be in an environment where a deadly virus is something we're not accustomed to working with. And 
like you said, just got to be conscious of the situation and make sure you're listening to your staff and then listening to all the regulations and stuff that are coming out. Just a couple more questions. Carmelo jumped back in with a follow up. So he wants to know, do you guys pass the uh, cost on to the customers for the menus? They have to pick menus every day. Um, you know, customers are already kind of complaining that the cost of food is high. What would your suggestion be on that one? Well, you know, things are going to go up. Things are going to go down. I mean, you're going to have to eat some of the costs. I mean, if you can bring some money in, uh, printing, if you, you know, that's something you're going to have to do. I mean, you could build it into the cost. I mean, I mean, paper menus can't cost that much money. I mean, I, I get paper menus made at four to five cents a piece. Yes, it adds up, you know, but it's, I, I don't know if you could put it in the cost, right? I write this section and we're all, we're all struggling and, you know, we, we started something where we didn't start, we didn't, you know, I didn't take coupons for two weeks, you know, to try to help balance off the, the rising costs, the shortages, and to help out employees, you know, to make sure it was coming in. And then I reinstated it after two weeks, after things balanced off, a couple things we did. Uh, I cut out the Grubhub. I cut out the slice, cut them out, you know, just do my own thing. You know, people want our food, they're going to call us direct. Um, so that's something I did. Um, you know, we have our own drivers. You know, make sure you just here and give them. Uh, make sure they're they're doing their thing. They walk in my door here, and I don't see them wash their hands. I kick them out the door. I like you guys go wash your hands. You walk in the door, you wash your hands. You come in, you get a new set of gloves, you go, and that's what they're doing. So I just make sure that their cars are properly done. I've even had my car sprayed with that stuff. So, and if I get my own gun, then I could do all the driver's guns. You know, I mean, the driver's cars as well. So that's something uh, that's going to be the norm for a while. Uh, it kills 99% of viruses and it's uh, for COVID, the flu, you know, MRSA, stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not 100%, you know, effective, but I'll take my chances with the the probability of the 99.5 but well yeah we got a couple more questions here real quick i'm gonna mute you real quick so we're not dueling mics here but um you know that was a good question carmelo i mean sometimes we're all in the same situation i think customers might already be feeling that they have a better understanding of that they have to support and they'll be understanding of some some cost increase because we're all trying to stay afloat um Vargas salmeda says hi Hello, Marcus. I think that uh, that was for Lenny and uh, Matt Catherinchia, which I am going to be calling you, Matt. I need to get in touch with you. I know you just spoke with my boss. He, s he says, you know, it's a smart move to cut out the third party services. But he uh, did have a question. Are you guys going to reduce your menu items when things are back up? Or are you going to stay with the current offerings? Now, I, I assume are you talking about um, not the cost, but the amount of because I've seen a Panino's menu. It's like reading all over the ring all at once. It's insane. <laughs> so. Um, no, we didn't, we didn't cut any of our menu stuff. Um, obviously we're not, you know, we have three different menus. We have a lunch menu, we have a dine-in menu, and then we have our takeout delivery. A lot of that stuff is interchangeable on our menu. Everybody thinks the menu is so big. Uh, it's just interchangeable products. Um, you know, we're a one-stop shop, you know, you want a burger? We, we have a half pound Angus burger here. That's really good. I, I, one of the best burgers around. You never think that you'd get that from an Italian place. Um, our ribs are really good. So, no, we want to keep a variety so we can keep everybody out there happy. And, you know, uh, as far as the family goes, you know, there's everybody's at home. What I did notice, though, uh, I didn't notice, though, uh, was they are ordering earlier on. You know, normally they'd come home from work and they're home at 6 o'clock. They order. We'd get busy between 6 and 8. Now it's like 4 to 6 four to seven at the most so i actually was open four to nine so now i'm going to reopen at three to nine and go that one extra hour because people are ordering early because they're home so i i, I kind of gauge that as well it's to adjust the hours to to accommodate everybody's needs there we go yeah so that's i mean that's definitely one change that you know seems it was inevitable. Like you said, most, most people are home now, so their, their habits are going to change. Are you scared about um, 
people's habits changing and not going back to the way they used to be? Or are you just going to make sure that you're adapted, you've adapted and you're going to stay that way? Like you said, people are ordering early now. Do you think that that's going to go back to normal or they'll eventually go back to ordering when they usually did? It's going to take quite some time, I feel. You know, until everybody, you know, until people feel safe, it's going to be the norm for a while. I think we're going to have to adjust our hours. I know um, JB Alberto's is open until 2 in the morning. And that Tony and Tony adjusts his hours till ten o'clock. That's unheard of for him. That's unheard of. So he 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 did what he had to do, and uh, I think that's a, a key part is just knowing your customers. And I just you got to remember, people are out. They spent. They've got a whole freezer and refrigerator full of food. Now they're going to order from you. They're not going to order from you every day or every twice a day. They're going to have their lunch and then they're going to you know support their local like we do back home every week. We are too. We we. You know, we support our local and we order and we go pick it up and, you know, but uh, me, I like to, I like to cook. So I'll make it pizzas in my backyard. I'm making experimental doughs. I'm just, just, just firing away. Yeah. We got the pizza kits, you know, um, so you gotta, you gotta just, you gotta go with the flow and uh, you gotta all hang in there. And this is something we've never, I don't think Hollywood could have written this script. For this well they did it was uh, came out in the 90s it was called outbreak i watched that just of course netflix was pushing that a few weeks ago and just the, some of the parallels was kind of insane so uh but yeah again we let hollywood teach us all we need to know but um i did want to say and i do have you muted again but um you did uh do something just recently where you're cooking in the backyard i would love to do one of these if we can get some good connection and we could just talk and we could all just sit here and watch you make a pizza in your backyard um not, not everybody's gonna have a wood-fired oven in their backyard you know some people are luckier than others but you know i think it's fun to watch so to try to get some normal scenes stay positive versus all this pandemic apocalypse talk that we're doing lately so uh, would you be up for that Definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I don't have a wood fire oven in my oven. I have a uh, the Fornoteca oven, which is the Blackstone. So I met the Blackstone people back in Las Vegas at the Pizza Expo. And, uh, you know, we went back there and I tried this oven out. And I'm like, wow, it's pretty good. So I ordered the Blackstone from the guy. And I think I was paid three, $280 back then for this damn thing. Very cheap. And then uh, I met these guys out there from Canada and they took it to another level. And I became friends with Anthony and them, and uh, uh, I was actually selling it on my uh, on my website before all this go on. Uh, help them out, you know, I don't make any money really off of it. So, um, just I, I just like the oven. I think it's great replacement for a wood fired oven. It cooks, you know, thin crust. I did a, even a pan pizza the other night on it, just just to test it out, We're playing with it to try to get the levels, you know. But you know, for a homeowner to do it. Um, you know, we, we, we share skills that they wouldn't know what to do with when, you, when you're doing it. Like the bottom is, you know, cooking too much and throwing a screen under there. I didn't have a screen. I was using my paddle to pick it up and give the top heat. But oh, I'd love to do it. I'm going to uh, – actually, the weather has turned to shit here again. But uh, as soon as it breaks, I'm going to do Chicago Thin Crust, you know, where I'll roll it out thin and put the, you know, the, our uh, – sausage down that we make with the hand you know hand pulled sausage down and cheese and, and show you what that versatility of that oven can do and also do and then crank it up to do a neapolitan uh pizza as well and uh no i think that would be fun because uh, again it's something that people can even just order online at walmart have delivered or anything to to be able to have pizza in there you know if they're a consumer but it's also as well as some of the independents out there watching just you got to stay sane somehow if you're stuck at home this often hopefully you guys aren't at home hopefully you guys are working so um lenny i know you've you've got a lot of information you've been uh, asking a lot of questions and, and you know navigating this storm for your own business is there any way people can reach you the phone they had questions i said the phone did ring right <laughs> Yeah, I had it muted, so we didn't hear it. But um, uh, how can people reach you if they want to ask you some questions, if you're available? Um, you can uh, email me at uh, Panino's Pizza, P-A-N-I-N-O-S, pizza at AOL.com. Yes, very reliable AOL. Um, or you can just hit me up on Facebook and send me a message. And I think you can get through us through the U.S. Pizza team site. I'm not sure, Brian. I don't know. I haven't uh, 
think you can go on there and click on there it'll send the click on yeah i'm pretty sure on the member page we have the link if not i'll make sure that happens today so right right so yeah i'd love to uh make pizzas in the backyard and then i toss them over to my neighbors and a couple friends come by and i you know make pizzas for them and i know my brother was giving away pizzas to his neighbors and actually the newspaper drove by and saw him and got a got a glimpse of him and you know he was supporting that he's making you know, doing his thing where it all started and it's in his garage and the uh, stuff like that. But, you know, just trying to keep saying and, you know, do whatever. Well, yeah, and that's great. And I did want to, again, one more time, thank, you know, Galbani for being such a great supporter of the U.S. pizza team and, and all of our members. Um, we were lucky enough, like I said, to be able to get over there. Uh, I believe it was July 9th, 2019. You can see right there um, they were – kind of going over, you know, some of the information that they have for as far as for vendors um, or, you know, people that, that want to use Galbani. But we got the inside look at the factory. Uh, we went out to Niagara Falls, had a great time. I almost pushed Lamarca off the boat. I, I really should have. I should have pulled that trigger. But, uh, yeah, so they, they, they're a great asset to the team. And they, they, you know, support people like Lenny and Gino and Bruno and um, numerous other members of our team as well as on the world pizza champs as well. So they're a great part of this industry and they're very active. So go ahead and check them out. If you can, I do want to say I did, I am going to be talking with, um, I believe I'm just going to be talking with Mike Nelson, uh, of little pops up there. I want to do some speaking with him because he just kind of came across my table again and, you know, we're definitely friends. So, uh, Past that, there's anybody else you think I should talk to, you know, you guys let me know and I will, uh, I'll, I'll get them on the schedule. But uh, again, Lenny, uh, thank you so much for your time, brother. Uh, any final thoughts or just a sign off? What do you got to say? Um, I just do want to give a shout out to, to all the pizza guys out there and gals that have, have reached out uh, to, to uh, you know, talk about the situation. You know, I talked, like I said, I talked to Mike, uh, I have a good friend of mine, Big Sam. He owns three hot dog stands here. I talk to him a lot you know, on a daily basis. We try to, you know, keep in touch and, you know, similar operations. But uh, God bless you, Sam. Stay, stay strong out there. Um, uh, Carmen uh, out in Jersey reached out to me. Anthony D'Souza reached out to me. We had some good conversations. They calmed me down a little bit. I was a little bit nervous at first. Uh, um, but, but speaking to both of those guys uh, helped and you know just different you know i talked to lamarco about well, three times a day when this was all going on and uh, you know he's a wealth of information because he sits on the board in ohio and then sam sanchez is a friend of mine he has a bunch of stuff here that's uh, on the illinois restaurant association uh, he's he's guided me through some stuff too and uh, you know i talked to you know my sponsors and i talked to you know jim martin over at uh, smithfield Actually, uh, Jim and I went to grade school and high school together, so we've known each other for years, and he's the vice president of sales. Um, I talked to uh, Jim Binner. I talked to Matt Cap Capricia. He's got a more of an Italian name than me. Cinque! <laughs> anyway, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, talking to the industry, I talked to my salesmen a lot. And, you know, just, just reach out to different restaurant owners. And, uh, you know, Derek uh came over here and supported us and uh that meant a lot to me uh, i met derek at the, on a plane actually when we were going to maryland to do the uh that uh pizza thing but uh he's been uh uh a great you know great friend and talking to him you know and yeah he was one of the you know he came in here and he he helped me out. He's like, yeah, we're going to close. And I just looked at him and I'm like, oh, I don't feel comfortable being here either. So I think I'm going to follow your path. So God bless everybody. Stay safe, health. Like I said, this COVID is no joke. We need to know how to work with it, live with it. And we, we have to figure out how to uh, to uh, keep, keep our minds at peace. So I go for walks every morning, you know. You know, two and a half, two, two miles, two, just to clear my head, you know, and uh, that seems to help me, you know. So all the questions that people ask, all the people that joined in, thank you for watching. Brian, thanks for having me. PMQ, Galbani, Smithfield, Greco, all our sponsors that, uh, that help us out as we travel and 
can't compete in the world because we'd be in Italy, I think, right now, right, Mike? Brian, would we be in Italy? Yes, I'm pretty sure we would still be there right now. Maybe coming back uh, today or tomorrow, or today might have been our final day of rest. So, yeah, I would have had a nice, you know, I miss my gelato. The best gelato in the world is in Parma, Italy. Amelia's, right? <laughs> That's the best. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't found anybody. I've been all over Italy. San Gemignani, they say they have the best. I'm telling you, that is the best gelato. And I make gelato here, so I'm kind of passionate about it. So. Well, Lenny, I do I'm going to mute you again real quick so that uh, my mic doesn't cut out. But, I, uh, you know, thank you again for everything. And I did want to say that there's a lot of information. If you guys have questions, you can also reach me at brian at pmq.com. But like Lenny said, reach out to people in your area. Reach out to people that you know. There's nothing better than a pizza world. These guys are friendly, and everybody wants to prop everybody else to do as best they can. So um, I want to thank you, um, Lenny. I want to thank Neil's Pizza, Gino and Bruno, and all of my guys on the US, guys and girls on the U.S. Pizza team, and all of our sponsors and Galbani. Uh, we have so many sponsors. Check out the U.S. Pizza team uh, website, and you can see all of our sponsors. There's so many to name, but uh, they're all a part of what we do, and they make us who we are. So I'm going to unmute you, and we're just going to sign off. The audio might go, but Lenny, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Keep your questions and comments coming. To you. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe and stay sane, guys.